Good afternoon. Okay. Good afternoon and thank you for joining us this, um, uh, this afternoon for our LMS Transformation Town Hall. Um, next slide, please. My name is Lucy Avitissi and I'm one of the program sponsors. Some general housekeeping items. Um, we ask that you submit your questions via the Q&A feature in Zoom and we will do our very best to answer all of them. And the questions and answers will be documented and uploaded into our FAQ section um, on our website. And as usual, the copy of the presentation deck and recording will be available on our website following the meeting. For today, uh, we have a couple of updates for you and hopefully we'll have uh, enough time to answer all of your questions. Uh, we will begin with a brief program status update. I'll talk about TA site approach update. Uh, course journeys, Canvas tour, training resources overview, and then we'll get into Q&A. Okay, program status. Uh, some of you may recall this uh, roadmap. It has been updated since our last meeting. It reflects the entire roadmap for the project. Prior to this, we were going until our fall go live. What we want to share here with you are some key activities um, and go lives, as well as transformational um, efforts that we as a project team are uh, working toward. The ones that have been grayed out, the first three, those have been accomplished uh, primarily, you know, the Canvas basic configuration, which began back in April uh, in preparation for our summer go live for a small cohort, as well as the course journey selection app that we released and asked faculty to let us know how they want their courses to be reflected in this new platform. What we are focused on right now um, are the learning design support, the Canvas training, and um, our big go live that um, we're looking forward to on September 1st is all access for our faculty, instructors, and TAs. And then um, the fall goal life, we have a larger cohort, um, but then we have a significant goal live with our winter quarter where um, almost all courses that are um, uh, going to be taught for the winter quarter will be um, housed in this new learning management system. We will continue to release quarterly uh, training, uh, provide additional um, LTI tools and integrate those with our Canvas platform and, um, and you know, continuously enhance our, our offerings as we prepare for our spring and summer and fall go live. The fall 22 go live will be our final go live as a project team. And at that point, all um, courses will be uh, residing within the uh, LMS platform. Uh, support for this platform is extremely important as well. You see there are two yellow flags, spring hypercare, summer hypercare. Uh, we are, as a team, very focused to make sure that once um, our faculty and our students are in this new platform, there's adequate support um, and are creating a center of excellence to really think through how to best support this platform and our um, end users. Next slide, please. Want to highlight some key accomplishments here. First, uh, we provided platform um, access to additional faculty who will be um, using the LMS platform this fall are part of the fall pilot. Uh, these are primarily the new faculty and those faculty who chose to teach their sequence courses starting this fall in Canvas. We also uh, uh, refined the Center of Excellence organization model, also the staffing plan, and finalized uh, the service, uh, service management platform called ServiceNow to make sure all the tickets are captured and addressed and routed promptly um, at, once we go live with the system. We also migrated um, over 19,500 curriculum courses as part of the, um, the uh, course migration effort, which was in part, which is in partnership with a vendor called K16. Uh, this was an iterative process, and we believe we are in a very good place with uh, migrating the, cur the courses for the last two years from CCLE into Canvas. The last item there is the um, the review, uh, the team reviewed the collected data from Course Journey web app from our faculty and distributed communications on next steps for course development support. Next slide, please. 
Okay, so what's next for the team? Um, the focus is to uh, migrate the non-curriculum courses by September 15th. And we believe we are gonna be successful with that deliverable as well. Um, also, uh, redesigning the LMS transformation website and the service management platform and page to provision uh, licenses for our local support units. Uh, we are continuing to onboard new faculty for fall pilot instructions as we learn about them. <laughs> um, and then finalize training support and documentation in preparation for our uh, fall access um, on 9-1 on September 1st, which is next week. So uh, this is what's next for us. And next slide, I'll transition to Ava. Thanks. Hi, everyone. Can you go to the next slide? So this is just a summary really of some things we've presented before um, and that the to reiterate that the approach to TA sites is going to be to encourage faculty to use the inherent um, native features in Canvas to allow their TAs to have their own modules or their own discussions with their sections, um, as well as to provide in those cases where that is not sufficient for someone's course, uh, a request uh, mechanism so that faculty can request TA sites, actual separate sites to be created. Um, there is currently no gradebook passback from the TA sites to the main site if you create separate sites. So you that will have to be managed on an individual basis, which is um, partly why we're encouraging the use of the native tools in Canvas to give your TAs some ways to talk to their students individually in section. Okay, so to talk about uh, support in particular, but also kind of how we can go to the next slide, um, how we're planning the process for transition of faculty courses and how to support them. I wanted to revisit the course journeys that we had introduced before um, in earlier town halls and, and other material, um, which, you know, of course, represent a continuum of um, effort in uh, working with Canvas for any given course that allow us to, to think a little bit more methodically about where support is. So there are three journeys that we've talked about and, and are continuing to plan around. One is really a lift and shift style journey of an existing course um, that's reliant on the automatic migration of content uh, from Moodle and has minimal updates and hopefully can be done uh, by many faculty with uh, either on their own or limited support. And, and we have a variety of material that's being put together to support specifically those journeys, which from what we can tell could be a large number of faculty. And this is supplemented by office hours and other um, opportunities to, to talk to people about how to make those transitions. Um, enhancement is the, the general idea that maybe in the move to Canvas, um, an existing course might use migrated material, some new material, and maybe a specific feature or two in Canvas. And so these have uh, similar, um, resources for self-service and independent work by faculty, but also course development, consultation, and some targeted training materials around specific uh, benefits and opportunities that come in the Canvas platform and are you know, consistent with goals for teaching and learning uh, on campus. And then the last um, and the most extensive involvement um, in this transition is to either redesign or reimagine a course for delivery in Canvas. That really is just about um, probably more instructional design or course development consulting support. Um, and of course, um, I wanna move on to the next slide and, and talk a bit about where the support is gonna uh, come from, but you could imagine uh, one of the things that we're gonna be working on is how to manage the request for those support that support across um, faculty. And I'll talk about that a bit uh, as well here. What this slide summarizes, and in fact, this is going to be something that we share in a meeting, a regular meeting between the CCLE and LMS teams that's coming up on Friday, is just the baseline of support that is largely new to, cam to campus with the Canvas effort. And so this includes the access to 24-7 support for faculty, staff, and students that provides um, you know, chat, phone, um, and other ways of getting feedback from uh, instructor directly on Canvas and hopefully taking a lot of uh, basic support questions. Uh, we're happy to be able to launch Walk Me in the fall, um, which is a tool that will provide real-time overlays uh, on Canvas in the browser while faculty uh, or students are, are working there. And we can build 
uh, UCLA specific real time walkthroughs in those overlays. And you'll see more on that um, as we start to roll out the tool over the course of the fall. And it evolves based on, on what we see that people need help for via yeah, help site, service desk, um, and uh, close interaction with the program team and the center of excellence being built out uh, to provide technical support. Um, and these are all sort of new resources coming with the, the effort to move to the new LMS. And we hope that they're sort of exciting and also supplemental to uh, the great local support and, and other folks that are already working across campus to support faculty in teaching and learning. We can move to the next slide. Um, I'm not going to go into the details of this. It's actually something we'll be talking about um, in other contexts with local support. But we wanted to summarize sort of the uh, places that support is happening on campus and just touch on the roles of each of the areas. So you see that there are five ways for end users to at or did I actually there's six, I think, if I'm counting right. Um, for end users to, to reach out for support, we're going to encourage them to go to Canvas directly. They can submit um, emails to uh, ITS through the Canvas uh, help email. They may reach out to local academic unit support or make direct contact with the COE and, and faculty may uh, fill out uh, requests for course support. Um, there's a level of sort of first line support that's happening wherever we can quickly answer a question um, in that first set of boxes we would. Um, and then there's uh, the resource of the LMS Center of Excellence and the transformation team to respond to more detailed questions. And in there are a set of purple lines that relate to course development itself and the uh, teaching and learning effort that is also underway to update courses where faculty are interested in. And one of the things that we're working on over the fall is the best way to balance the different resources that exist um, in the um, central canvas uh, transition, the LMS transition project. Um, with the resources that are already engaged with faculty on a regular basis, um, academic local support and the teaching and learning centers. So we can go to the next slide. And so um, I wanted to sort of summarize and, and hint at the way that we're going to work through that. Uh, we have, um, you know, not something, this isn't going to start out immediately perfect. It's something we hope to iterate on with uh, everyone on campus and figure out the best way to, to handle it. Um, but we are looking at a a specific and transparent way to prioritize those um, deeper journeys of transformation in, in the individual courses, specifically those enhanced and redesign journeys, and to try to figure out how to manage the finite resources on campus um, while allowing faculty to make pedagogical changes if they're interested um, during the transition and, and kind of figuring out how to take into account the capacity and the load of local support. And so uh, I'm, I'm not going to go through all the criteria on the right, but they have to do um, with when is the course being offered, how many students does it impact, how does it relate to the division and departmental priorities, um, and of course, uh, what's going on in the, in the unit and how we can support that, and how can we spread the effort um, in terms of the teaching and learning updates to the courses over the course of the whole project, so that we're not trying to get everything done right at the beginning, but um, improving the way that we offer that support over the course of the, of the year. So uh, there's a lot more to talk about here. We could touch on it in the Q&A if it's helpful. And, and like we said, we'll be recapping this with local support. Um, this is just summarizing things that have been under discussion for some time. Um, with that, I think we can go to the next slide. And we wanted to, to do a, a bit more of a live tour of uh, Canvas. And so I'll turn it over to Ava and Mark for that. Thanks. Um, OK, so next slide, please. So I have a couple of slides here, just orienting everyone to the kinds of things, whoa, let me go back, um, <laughs> that we will see, that you'll see when you log into Canvas um, next week. I'm not sure why it's going back and forth, but that's okay. Um, uh, okay, this is being played for some reason. <laughs> um, when you log into Canvas next week, you will see your courses migrated from the last two years. Um, you will also have an empty shell, uh, a sandbox site for you to, um, to try out Canvas in. Um, and, and you will have some help materials as well um, that are there for you. Um, as Jeff was just mentioning, there will be um, self-paced 
Canvas training materials from Instructure, which is Canvas's parent company. There will be um, information from WalkMe, uh, which will tell you how to do various things on your screen as it happens. Um, and there will be links to guides and checklists that we have prepared for people to work with their new materials in Canvas. Um, so I think maybe given the slides, I'll just start looking at the actual Canvas sites, <laughs> um, if I can share my screen. Um, so Professor George Wong has been kind enough to allow us to use his site um, as a sample uh, to show uh, how a course may, uh, might appear in uh, CCLD Moodle and then how it looks when it gets moved over to Canvas. So this is his um, Film 33 site in CCLE, as you can see. Um, and this is the same site as it get, got moved, migrated in Canvas. Um, so I don't wanna make you too dizzy by going back and forth and back and forth, but I'll just highlight a few things and then we can talk more generally about um, some of the things that Canvas does. So you saw the, the, the landing page, which was here. And then in Moodle, as you are all aware, there are um, weeks where you have uh, introductory material, you have some lectures, you have quizzes, reading assignments. The setup is, is fairly similar in Canvas. So this is the landing page, a welcome. Modules is Canvas's ter term uh, for like, organizing groups of material, which would correspond to weeks in Moodle. So if you come here, you can see um, a similar structure, lectures, um, assignments, readings, all the stuff is here. Um, it's just in modules instead of weeks. The other thing I just wanna point out quickly is at the top of all the migrated courses that um, you will see when you enter Canvas on September 1st, uh, we have, put some help and resources information for you, um, which link out to uh, a, a website that has training and teaching and learning materials, um, some checklists and best practices about how to work with your import, and um, some Canvas how-to guides. Also at the top, we have um, provided, if you would like to use it, a section that has uh, some placeholders for getting started information, instructor information, like introducing yourself and your TAs, and a syllabus review. If you choose to disregard this, that's fine. That, we just put that there for your convenience. Um, and then you will see the rest of your materials pretty much the same as you would see them in CCLE. So here's some videos. more videos, um, some reading assignments, some, some other assignments here. Um, so a quiz, So I mostly wanted to just give a quick overview of how you can see your material in CCLE and in Canvas. And also I would just wanted to point out that when you first log in to Canvas, you will see um, a dashboard. It's sort of what Canvas calls the entryway to its system. Um, and you will see all your courses on these, these cards here, and you would just click on them to get to a course. You also may have some, uh, announcements like this one at the top that asks you to accept um, a role in a course that you have been assigned to. Um, and all you need to do is say yes. And that's basically asking you to um, uh, accept your role in the course. Okay, I'm gonna stop for a minute there. And then if we have time, um, I can ask my colleague Mark to do a little bit more on the Canvas gradebook and to go over the features of a template. Thank you. I'll share my screen as well. Um, let's get my windows up there. All right, so I was also ready to share some of that import if we needed to, so I'm gonna to go to the template. 
Um, when you, uh, so there, there's essentially two pathways you could begin with. You could either use the Moodle import that uh, Ava just showed, or you could start with a blank site and import the template as a place to start. You could certainly also just start with a blank site and, and build from very, very basic if you wanted to, but we built the template to give you uh, a head start on that work. And so you can see it looks very similar to the imported site because the imported site used the template as the framework to bring that material over. So just gonna talk over some of the high level details here. So um, you would put in your course information here, course number, course name. Uh, this banner here can be replaced by either a whole folder of banners that we have prepared, or if you wanna make a banner custom for your course, that can also be added there. Um, Jeff has a nice banner with some people uh, being staged on their, their presentation, like they're all moving around, so that can be done. Uh, this menu here is navigation, and that has been pre-built. You don't need to modify this. This will automatically link you to any one of these modules. So that work has already been done. So for example, if you want to look at module seven, you would click there and it will take you to the first page of module seven. So there's no HTML needed by you. It's all been coded in there. And that's a nice transition to how you might organize each module. So <clears throat> we started each module with uh, like an agenda overview page. And so the first section is you'd write some introduction words, what you're going to be talking about that week. And if you have outcomes, you can add them there as well. And then the next box here is resources that you'll be covering in that particular module. Uh, for example, you could have a video, you can include study notes, a reference to the textbook. You can also link to the library. You can link to videos you've made and so on. And in your import, we've done uh, the best job that we can to have resources that were in your module in uh, Moodle brought and placed in the correct module overview. That won't be 100% because not everyone used the same organization scheme, but we've done the best job possible <laughs> to move those over. So um, hopefully that will be convenient for you and not um, too much of a hassle to link all those. And then at the bottom, there is a module checklist. And this is, again, automatically generated for you. So depending on whatever you put in your module view, which I'll show in a moment, uh, will automatically populate into this bottom section. So the, the thought here is to create something that gives you the sort of quickest path to um, what do I read, what do I do in a particular module, and the least amount of sort of futzing and uh, going back and forth and having to hard code things by yourself. Um, so for example, if I'm in overview one, which I'll show in a moment, and I wanted to not have discussion one in there, so I'll go there. So you can see discussion one is in there, but if I were to just move it out, so like if you decided I don't wanna have discussion one in module one anymore, it will automatically do that for me. I won't have to do that piece. So you can see it's it's gone out of there now. So again, this is just with the mind of being the least amount of um, hassle for you. Um, and then I'll use also show you some of the other pieces that we templated. Oh, I was thinking. Okay, so uh, this is a template for an assignment. You would put your instructions here. This part here, you can modify to be whatever your particular assignment is. If you wanna get a PDF, then delete these other, these other lines. And the instructions around this are Canvas specific, so you don't have to reformulate that every time. Um, I see some Q&A coming in. I don't know if I should look at them or if the other group is gonna handle just, that. I can just handle it really quick. Okay, Someone thank you. This if the modules um, had to be 10 and the answer is no, you can no. you can add or subtract as needed. Sure, T 10 seemed to be, you know, here's my thinking, there's roughly 10 weeks in a term and so one week per module, but that's, you know, 24 hours and seven days in a week, that was an assumption, but you could certainly modify it to fit your context. Um, so those are the, the sort of very high level elements about the template. If there are like specific questions or details, I, I could answer them now if they're in the chat or people can feel free to reach out to me and I'm happy to discuss it and talk about people's particular uh, needs and context. Mark, do you maybe want to, oh, okay. Yeah, I can, so, well, I can keep going too. I mean, I can talk the whole hour <laughs> if we wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> I was just gonna say, can you maybe show a couple of those features in the grade book that we oh, yes, discussed real quick and then I think we can move on. Great. Um, so it's gonna go there. Um, this has no students in here, but when you do have students and um, there's a feature here, message student who, um, this is a Canvas feature, I didn't build this. 
it allows you to filter messaging by certain criteria. So for example, students who haven't submitted yet, I find this extremely useful in my teaching because uh, I can just give my students a poke. Hey, I think it's really important that you still submit for this discussion. And you can do that at any point. Like if the due date has not been reached yet, you can still poke people, you know, like you got one day left, please still be in this the discussion. Um, and there's a couple other criteria here haven't been graded yet so that you might message your students who um, you haven't got to their grading yet. Um, you know, thanks for your patience. Scored less than, hey, I think we need to have a meeting and you could retake this or scored more than, great job, congratulations, top of the class. Um, and and that, that particular feature is available for any one of the assignments, anything that has a, a grade associated with it. Um, Ava, what else did we want to talk about the gradebook? Did I forget something? No, I think that's good. Okay. I don't yeah, know how like, we're doing for time. Yeah, thank you. Okay, well, I look forward from hearing the questions and thank you so much. Yeah, why don't we go ahead and switch back into the slides and actually we can go up to the um, the slides that were advancing on their own and, and go through them just quickly. There's some helpful points there. Thanks, Ava and Mark. So we're going to go. Well, okay, we're going to go back um, just to run through the slides that we missed. And all right. Um, so I, I think we have a little bit of time to cover these. Ava, do you want to go ahead and just kind of run through these points because I think sure. they're crucial for the. Um, and in <laughs> fact, do this again. <laughs> why don't why don't we do this? I'll, uh, <laughs> I don't know Aaron, why we can't stop Aaron, this, but um, stop, Aaron, if you want to stop sharing, I'll just share my um, share my PDF version here. Or we can Ava, go ahead. Sorry. Okay. Um, so uh, what you will see on September first, next Wednesday, is your migrated course from last two years, an empty sandbox um, where you can explore and practice. Your course shells for winter, the courses you will teach starting in January, will be available in early fall. Um, and the collaboration sites will be moved also um, with K-16 by mid-September. Um, where to get help, as we uh, talked about, and we can actually go back and show some of this in the Canvas sites. Um, there will be self-paced Canvas training materials from Instructure that are linked to the help menu, which is on the bottom left of, the, of, of any Canvas page. Um, the Walk Me tutorial pop-ups that Jeff mentioned earlier will be available to you know, show you key buttons on the screen and what to do with them. Um, and there are guidelines and tutorials, as I pointed out at the top of your migrated courses from the last two years that will help you with Canvas, with using the template, with using your migrated course and all those kinds of things. But there will also be live workshops and drop-in hours. Um, Canvas has a live 24 seven support that you have access to. The phone number and email and chat contact for that are also in the help menu at the bottom left. Um, okay, next slide. Um, and this is mostly what I just showed, but just to, to reiterate it again, um, your content and assignments are there, they've all been moved. Um, your videos are there, they've all been moved. Um, or they're really still in Kaltura, but they're now accessible through Canvas. Um, we have provided the, the template format to sort of uh, organize most of your material. Um, and there is a guide for reviewing that format and how we organize things and how to change them. Mark showed you a little bit of things you could do, removing things, adding things, um, all built into your migrated sites. And this, I think we already covered, but modules, as I said earlier, is Canvas's organizing unit. It's equivalent to weeks in CCLE. Um, it's not necessarily tied to a calendar. Uh, uh, one of the questions in the chat was about, can I change it to weeks? You cannot actually change the term modules in Canvas because Canvas uh, controls that. But a lot of people just write module one, week one, or module one, unit one, or module five, unit five, or module one, units one and two, or you know, however you choose to, to organize it. Um, it's basically a, a, an area of um, content and assignments. The dashboard I showed you, that's where you land when you first log into Canvas and it will show you your published and unpublished courses. Um, in the card, you can also get the card format that I showed you, but there's you can also get that in a list. And the template, which Mark just went over, is 
again, an effort to help first time users with design and organization. You don't have to use a template. We're putting it there for your convenience. It organizes um, some of the um, major course elements that people tend to use um, and, and provide some a styling along with that. Thanks. Um, and it, I think something that we'll probably revisit and is certainly I know the, the team is going through in, in training is to the, the question that was asked about, can I retitle these to weeks or that first page that uh, students encounter when they visit your um, site is a template and it's something that's editable and, and kind of completely customizable. And so the, there's kind of a balance here between trying to provide a template that makes it easy to get started in getting the material there for students and ties modules to weeks, um, but there's a lot of flexibility in terms of how the courses are constructed. And in my case, I, I renamed all those links, um, you know, to go week by week in the course, um, but, you know, we'd still probably be talking about them as modules um, in terms of, of where the content is organized. So why don't we, while we're here, just uh, hit a couple of the questions that are coming in the chat. So the first one, uh, will local support also have access to the migrated sites within their subject areas beginning uh, 9-1? So I think the answer to this, and some of you will correct me if I'm wrong, is that yes, from the left, so sub-account administrators will have visibility into migrated courses in their sub-accounts. Um, and those migrated courses will come over as unpublished. So faculty will see them if they're their courses and um, the sub-account administrators will be able to see them and they can, I think, configure, you know, whoever else in their support need, team needs to be able to have access, um, but they're not published for anyone else to see. Uh, will the winter course shells default to the template? I think, uh, Ava, do you have the current answer for that? The current answer, well, uh, is both yes and no. And the reason for that is, all the all the courses migrated out of Moodle and into Canvas, so the courses for the last two years are coming across with the template. The winter course shell that will be created for January 22 at this time does not have the template. If you want to use a copy of your templated course coming over from the migration, you can simply copy that course into the shell for winter quarter or have someone help you do that. Um, if you would like the template, we do have the blank template available to also import into the course shell that will be automatically created from the registrar for winter 22. So it's sort of up to you. The template is optional. And moving a moving a template over into an empty course shell is, is trivial and something that can be done. By Very us. easy. We, that will be one of our top videos, I'm hoping. How to move your the template into your course. All right, we can go ahead and move on. If there are any other questions that this uh, any of this has brought up, I'm happy to keep covering those in Q&A in the chat. Um, okay, so we wanted to, to sort of tease out some of the training resources that are coming and uh, not necessarily to go into them in any detail, uh, but to go ahead and kind of clarify what's gonna be available. So the first is there will be a, a training site a built in Canvas that will um, have sections for faculty, TAs, support, um, eventually students as well as we transition. Uh, there's already student material there for the fall pilot. You'll see it kind of grow in prominence as we look towards uh, winter 22. And it acts as a place for all the training materials, the teaching and learning resources that are being put together to highlight um, pedagogical approaches built on um, Canvas as a, as a platform and the information on training calendar, uh, live training, recorded demos, and so on. We can go to the next slide. And then in addition to that, um, we'll see sort of Canvas, uh, Canvas level support that's linked out um, from there. And this is just, I think, providing a bit more detail on sort of platform overview features that are being built by the training team um, and the guides that are platform focused maybe versus uh, being focused on a particular audience or a particular teaching and learning objective. Let me go to the next slide. Um, and then I think looking even a bit further into those other course journeys that people may be on, be a variety of uh, design materials that include um, some draft guidelines uh, that are put together for the instructional designers within the LMS team. So you can have a sense of what uh, our team is looking at to make sure is completed uh, within a course when it's built out for the first time. Um, also templates, um, so more, more than one example template and how to use them, um, examples in terms of use of modules, assignments, and, and so on, the other things listed here as well. 
Um, you know, one thing that I've been finding interesting as I start to poke around in the resources the team is putting together and, and really look at how they work in Canvas, it's also been helpful for me to see them organized in Canvas as a platform. Um, so again, you'll see this, this site built out and these resources are available in Canvas itself. To move forward to the next slide. Um, there will be um, a calendar of events that can be reached from there. I'm not going to go through the, the long list of events that we have here. We'll go to the next slide. Um, as well as um, already some recordings of past training events. So for example, Foundations for Faculty, there are already uh, recordings of the part one and two of those, as well as of course the technical training and others that uh, support folks might be familiar with. Go to the next slide. Um, and then uh, finally, we wanted to highlight again the sort of uh, this, this new platform that will be available as an overlay on Canvas in the browser uh, of faculty, staff, and students that sort of turn it on and are looking for uh, real-time help. And this provides step-by-step uh, -step instructions on how to complete the common tasks and is something that we can customize uh, specifically for UCLA over time. So this would be a new type of help um, and we'd really uh, love to get feedback from the folks that are involved in supporting faculty and TAs for now, but students as well directly. And uh, in terms of how we could use this to take uh, the users through things that you might be doing on a regular basis uh, by hand. So excited to see how that might work. We'll go to the next slide. Um, and then finally, uh, with the 9-1 go live uh, in anticipation of that, we'll be relaunching the LMS transformation website in a way that's really focused now on the campus community and uh, the platform itself, as opposed to the transformation project and the information that was there um, previously. So you'll see an update in something that's uh, a little bit more user facing than it has been uh, up until now. And it will point back into the types of resources that were described before this. Uh, so we can go on. Okay, um, so just to talk a bit about next steps and activities, and then we'll head into Q&A. Um, just a reminder, 9-1 fall all faculty launch. Um, and at this point, you'll also see along with the welcome or in the welcome materials that everyone receives links to the pilot versions of the training materials, um, information on live training sessions, um, ways to reach out for uh, course development support, and um, you know, basically the entry points into all the things that we've been discussing so far. And we'd love to continue to get uh, feedback from everyone on both the information that's going out there, but also the planning in terms of the support mechanisms across campus to take care of the, the questions and uh, activity that we have uh, going forward. So I think that's it in terms of prepared material. We have plenty of time to uh, keep going through Q&A if there are open questions. Uh, so I'll pause here for a second. It's hard to distinguish between long questions that are taking a while to type and no questions, but we'll, we'll wait a little bit longer. All right, we'll let this I'll give it one more second to wrap up here. I did want to mention uh, one thing that wasn't specifically listed on the next steps is the team is reaching out uh, for department level meetings. And so if you are a faculty member or on a support team, um, we have reached out to the department chairs to set up uh, meetings across all the departments or groups of departments in some cases, um, and then to take a little bit of time in faculty meetings um, in the fall, if the uh, chairs are willing to, to provide that time, just to hear directly from faculty and, and interact with them around the program. And so if you are you know, in a local unit and um, want to coordinate on that meeting or you know, have any comments uh, 
ahead of it, please do reach out to us and let us know. Um, hopefully that'll be a good opportunity to just revisit this in person with, um, with as much of the faculty as we can cover. Um, breakdown on tentative slash expected rollout by term 5% fall 21. Um, let's see if I can get the numbers right. I might ask the project team the count of the fall pilot courses. I think I get the number wrong. It's in the we in 150-ish pilot courses uh, in the fall. And then uh, typically, so somebody can correct it if I don't have the right number, but I believe it's 150 uh, or so um, courses that are piloted in the fall. And then uh, generally, you know, looking at the past number of courses supported on CCLE, um, it's in the range of 35 to 3,800 per, um, per quarter. But a large number of those sites, um, I would say, I'm trying to remember, I think around 30, 30 ish percent or so, uh, maybe syllabus only or empty sites that were not used to host content. Um, and then we were seeing within the sites that uh, are used and the, the surveys that we had done of faculty, um, a blend of kind of mostly lift and shift interest. And then um, in, I think 60 ish percent lift and shift and then 40% or so interest in the other two journeys. Um, so that's that's the kind of off the cuff breakdown that, that I would give. I can try to convert it into percentages, but relatively um, small pilot on the order of 150 courses, and then um, you know servicing all the CCLE, the, all those sites that had previously been on CCLE, but with the understanding that the activity in those course sites varies pretty widely, and in many cases is syllabus posting or, or limited information as well. Hope that answers the question. Give a second in case there are follow-ups there. And Ava, correct, if I got any numbers wrong, let me know, but I think, I think I'm roughly correct. About right, yeah. All right. With that, we'll go ahead and wrap up and uh, look forward to receiving any other comments and questions that you have. As usual, the slides will be posted as well as recording and, and any of the answers that came as follow up. So thank you all very much. Um, happy end of August. And, and we'll see you after the go live or maybe during it uh, if you're working on the project. All right. Thanks so much. Thanks. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye.